This is going to be our homework help video for the inequalities quiz review. Go ahead and get started with this top section here, just a simple true or false. So all that really matters is that the inequality in the middle is facing the right direction. As you can see in this first one, it's facing the wrong direction. The way we should we can think about it is it being an alligator that wants to eat the bigger number. Here he's eating the smaller number, and that is not the way that he should be facing. When it's a positive and a negative, he always wants to eat the positive, because positives are always better than negatives. And when it's two negatives, he actually wants the smaller negative. And the way that I explain this is that, uh, would you rather be $8 in debt or $4 in debt? Well, it's better to have less debt, so that's why we should actually face it this way, making this false. I'll let you figure out if that last one is true or false. All right, when writing an inequality, given a graph, we can pick whatever variable we want. I like x, you might want to do j or m, whatever you want. Uh, so you just write the variable that you've picked, and then you look at the end value, and you write that numerical value. I see that we have a dot at 0. Now we have to put a symbol in between our variable and that uh, number. And for that, we look at the end of the arrow. It kind of looks already like a less than symbol. So I put a less than symbol in here. And then very last, I decide if I want to have that or equal to part. This dot is filled in, so I do want that or equal to. Now when we graph, we go in the other order. I look at the, the boundary value. For this one, it's 4. I go to 4. I make a dot. I check and see if it has that or equal to, because I might want to fill in this dot. In this case, I don't. And then I draw an arrow in the direction that the inequality seems to be facing. This looks like it's pointing to the left. So my arrow goes to the left from this dot. And sometimes I draw it a little bit above the line. There, I kind of put it right on the line. I meant to put it a little bit above the line. Let's see if I can fix it on number 10 here. I'm going to put a closed dot at 4 because I have that or equal to, so I want it to be closed. And then the arrow is going to go to the right. Yeah, that's more like how I do it, uh, because the inequality looks like it's pointing to the right. This is a greater than symbol, so we go to the numbers that are bigger. All right, when solving an inequality, the rules are pretty much the same as solving an equality, or we, an equation is what we call that, with this one big caveat that if we ever divide or multiply by a negative, we must flip the direction of the inequality. That happens right here in problem number 13. To get rid of this negative 13, I have to divide both sides by negative 13 because it's multiplying our variable, and that's how we undo that. But since I divided by a negative, instead of being a less than or equal to, it flips to being a greater than or equal to. And this side's going to be a 10. And then same rules for graphing. All right, let's look for one with maybe a different step to it, like maybe, let's actually do uh, 16 real quick. So negative 65 is greater than or equal to negative 5n. I divide both sides by negative 5, negative 5, and I get a 13 on this side. I divide it by a negative, so my inequality flips direction. But this is harder to graph because the variable's not on the left side. So you take it and you flip it around, so the variable's on the left. n is greater than or equal to 13. Now it's easier to graph because I can use that trick that the arrow points in the same direction as the inequality. So here, that's pointing the wrong way. And flip it around. Now I can use that trick. All right, let's look at the back side. We've got some that have multiple steps. We'll start with number 19. Negative 2 is greater than v minus 5 over 2. I copy it down with some space. The entire right hand side is being divided by 2, and that's where my variable is. So I'm going to multiply the entire side by 2. Balance that by doing it on the other side, and that will cancel this divide by 2. Only multiply first if the entire side is being divided. So now I've got negative 4 is greater than v minus 5. This is negative. That doesn't mean that the inequality had to flip. It would be if the step is negative. But as you can see, we multiplied by a positive 2. All right, add 5, add 5. We get 1 is greater than v. This is hard to graph, so I switch it around. v is less than 1. Notice the inequality switched to 2. Open circle at 1, arrow going to the left. All right, uh, we've got some parentheses down in problem uh, 21. Negative 3 times negative 4m minus 8 is greater than or equal to 120. 
Parentheses are actually the first thing we, we deal with, so I get rid of them by distributing anything that's in front. Negative 3 times negative 4m becomes a positive 12m, and this over here becomes a positive 24. We've got constants on both sides. I subtract 24 to move that 24 away from my variable. 12m is greater than or equal to 96. Divide both sides by 12. I get that m is greater than or equal to my calculator, 96 divided by 12 is 8. So close dot at 8, arrow going to the right. All right, let's see if there's any others we have to do. Let's just do 24 real quick. It's not that different, but I think it'll still be just good practice. Distribute the 7. 119 is less than or equal to 7 plus 14p. Constants on both sides. 112 is less than or equal to 14p. Divide both sides by 14. 12 divided by 14 is 8. It's less than or equal to p. p is greater than or equal to 8. Close dot at 8. Here we're coming this way. All right, I'll call that good for now. Good luck studying. Have a good rest of your day.